Mr. Doug. So Brian, if I heard, manages a very large stock of um, of Zini or Zini efforts or Zini ready projects, and it's a weighty responsibility. So I'm gonna, where is your presentation? So, well, that's the thing. It's either Mutual Asthma or Brian. Uh, and it's a PowerPoint with lots of animation and different overlap, so it's going to be interesting to keep up. So, uh, Okay, I'm Brian Dove, Mutual Housing California. We're based in Sacramento. We have 19 affordable housing communities. They range in size from 30 units or so on up to about 120 units. Uh, one, back to your point, what is, so I'm the director of asset management. And does everyone know the field of asset management? No? Okay, so this is how it was described to me once. The, the real estate developers, they get to have all the fun. They, get, they gather all their friends, the architects, the designers, the bankers, the lenders, the investors. Uh, they design these buildings, they have this big orgy, and they produce a, a project. <laughs> And then they hand the baby off to an asset manager to raise it for the next 15 plus years. <laughs> so thank you all for doing it and for leaving us with these babies to raise. So, uh, so I'm going to explore some of the cool things mutual housing is doing these days and some of the challenges we face with all these great technologies. Uh, this first slide, does everyone get to this first? Let's say title of your friend. It's Brian. Something, it's the one that's passed around separately. Or right. mutual housing. Mutual There's mutual a, housing. Right after Jenna on the other one. There's one. You guys don't have it. Does everyone have it? I didn't get one of mine. Do you have? Does anyone have that zip drive? There's a jump drive right here. Give me that. Yeah. I want that. Here's one. Okay. <laughs> Okay, or you guys can see it from here. Should I? So this is a list. We've got 19 properties. A little more than half have solar panels installed. This is just a chart of the estimated annual production of the panels. And so this one, which I'll get into later, is mutual housing at Spring Lake, which is a ZNE property. Uh, this is uh, 69 units. Uh, and then on down, so these offset the common area as well as the residential units, and then down here are some properties where we're just offsetting the common area load. Uh, one thing is an asset manager, we look at how much PV is produced as compared to the what it should be producing every year. So you can see some properties are right at where they should be, and other properties are a little less than where they should be. Third slide. You guys see this one? So one, one tool we're using is WeGoWise, where it's an online software program that reaches out to PG&E or SMUD or the utility company and grabs the data and presents it in a cool way. So this trend looks pretty great on the annual PV production. It's year over year. In the winter, it's not producing much. Summertime, it produces more. So this property, more, more village mutual housing, is producing about what it should be. Uh, the SNAP, if you click forward, this one, New Harmony Mutual Housing. You see what the heck is going on here? You don't see that? So year over year, this one we had a challenge with the inverters. This has two big SATCON inverters. And if you guys are familiar with SATCON, they went out of business. And the installer couldn't quite figure out what happened. They would track down all the old SATCON workers to get replacement parts. And so it took a while. It, uh, it worked well in the winter time, and then as the sun was out in the summer, it conked out, and then they could come and try to repair it, and then it was on for a couple days, and then it conked out again, then they had to go find replacement parts in Canada or something like this, so it took a long time to get this back producing, and so about a year ago, it went back online, and we're good now, but uh, those first two years were challenging. Uh, okay, so why aren't all the PV producing how they what they should be. So some of these these pictures will show us what sort of challenges we ran into. Uh, these smart meters are not very smart all the time. They'll shut off for whatever reason. Uh, we've had power surges from the grid that conk out the inverters, and then we have to go reset them. 
a poorly placed combiner box. It got wet when it rained, and then the, the, PV, the inverter <laughs> shorted out, so we had to re, relocate this. I thought it was like an irrigation control system. Irrigate, well, this was a... It's similar. Similar. This is interesting. Yeah, our, our, GCs, our GCs don't want to contract directly for the solar installation, and so we'll do everything else but the PVs under two different contracts. And so this is where the, you know, this is the whole the gap. And so they thought they were doing this. The other team thought they were doing this, and integrated development. Of course, shading and. Uh, sun cover, this would not be a good day for solar panel production, right? Uh, and then uh, oh, the inverters, of course, are always going out. And so we, we train our on-site team to once a week go check all the inverters if they have the green light. You know, if it's yellow or red, that's not good, or off, we'll, they'll be able to reset them. These uh, inverter shutoff switches, kids love to switches like this, you know, and, and we can't lock them because they're emergency shutoff switches. Uh, I, I have it happened more than once? Just... It's been a, a couple, not more than once, but less than three or four. Right. Right. But, uh, yeah, cars can hit the, the carport structures that hold the solar panels, that's happened a couple of times. Uh, and then soiling, of course. Sorry, you guys all at this picture with the, the roof with the two guys up there cleaning the solar panel. Yes. So this, they get up there, it's just a hose, and then this guy's got a mop on the other end. No, no uh, soap or anything. You can see halfway across, it's dirty, dirty and clean. So how many, what's the guess on what percent increase in production we got? 20. 20%, 18%, 65%, 6%, oh. which is very surprising, on the next week, from week to week. week so week, yeah. two, of our, two of our properties have uh, the Wi-Fi enabled system on the roof to produce, show uh, daily production. So these are the two properties. So you can see the week before and the week after. So there's a good jump. You can guess which day. Uh, and I don't think it pays for itself. These are two big properties. Those two big ones uh, are about a thousand bucks to clean at one time. And you can see the production, but it's about six percent the one day. So, question. Similar climate conditions. Yeah. It's the summer in Sacramento. We've had thirty days of full sun, no clouds. So, yeah. I could comment on that briefly because we've done hundreds of houses here, ten and twenty thousand projects. And there's been insignificant changes in having to clean the panels. We check every year output. Remarkably similar for the last 17 years. Remarkably similar. From year over year production? Year over year. So they don't degrade year over year. And okay. dirt wise, Arcata City Homes, after 10 years, their output went up, so I have to assume it's the weather. We have right. switches in all sorts of funky places. We've had no calls. One time we had one switch shut up. So on the average, these things are not a big deal. They're not being so messy in our experience in our region. Even on your for a single family or city hall, is that We're here? talking about yeah. all of it. We, we oh. check 10 affordable housing projects, okay. maybe yeah. 500 houses. Yeah. We check every year, bicycle around, read the meters and the inverters. Yeah. Maybe 1%, 2% are most of inverter failure. So I wouldn't overemphasize failure because our experience has shown that it hasn't been significant enough every time. Just like in any industry, you can get with a company that won't work well that time, whether it's solar panels or toilets or cook stoves. Yeah. But on the average, we're just not seeing it. Well, you're lucky. Good for you. <laughs> so we do, I guess the point is we do have challenges as asset managers and building owners. It's important to make sure these great systems are maintained. maintained. Well, you know, if, if it makes a difference in ten dollars or twelve dollars a day, yeah, then you're talking about eighty or hundred days, and you got to pay back. Right, and that's assuming no more dirt gets on it, and that the curve of the year, you know, where six percent is not is great in June, but not so much in September, October. So. I think we're going to do it. We did it in July. We did it a couple of weeks ago, and that's what that date is for. We'll do it in June. I'd like to do it early June so we get the biggest, the longest day. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't like this.
go around our property and see all the dirt on our panels. It looks bad, <laughs> and that's part of it. But uh, okay, so this slide here, it's more village mutual housing. This is uh, electricity costs. You can see our once we installed the solar panels, the electricity cost just went from ten thousand down to a thousand or, or fifteen hundred. Um, and then some of our other uh, some of our other uh, utility costs here. And then the next one, Mutual Housing River Garden, you can see the utility costs here dropped. That wasn't from solar installation, that was an exterior lighting replacement, LED lighting. Hey, that's huge. Uh, and then you can see this one, uh, water savings. Uh, so if you click it one more time, you can see uh, this was from SMA, the utility company, just the day we added the uh, LED lighting, it just dropped off the cliff. Uh, um, so water, I'll get to in a minute. Water, we had big savings at this property. Sewer, if anyone can sh tell me how to save money on sewer, <laughs> this is the biggest cause. <laughs> yeah, there is a way, actually. Yeah. Um, you um, uh, have separately meter all of your irrigation water, and then it gets, typically you're, you're charged with your sewer by the amount of water you use. Uh, separately uh, meter that, you yeah, it out. That's a portion of our bill. A big portion is the admin fee and the facilities fee and the... It's, uh, I mean, so, like, well, yeah, if you look at this river garden, so our, as our water costs went down, or our sewer costs went up. Have you year replaced year. the toilet? Not, uh, in some properties, yeah. I'll show you a slide. Look, It'll save on sewer costs. Great. Less water exactly. going down. There's a lot of flat fees. There's no yeah, option. Yeah, there could be a flat fee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's just, they, they it's they just meter sewer water. That's true. Right. It's just great. We talk a lot about Z&E and electricity costs, and you can see the pro the uh, the proportion of the savings from electricity versus the sewer. If we can save that same percentage in sewer costs, as an owner, that that would be amazing. We're not saving the environment, but we are saving costs. Uh, okay. Oh, so this is where we did the water. Just a little tip on where we did the water saving. So this is our mutual housing at River Garden property. It's our biggest property, 123 units, two-story garden style apartments, campus style here. And if you see the this area off to the right here, this is a utility easement, and there is a it's basically an urban farm. And and I think if you click again, you can, it zooms in a little bit. And the only source of water is our property. <laughs> so unfortunately, I don't have spigot uh, uh, pictures, but there are spigots on top of spigots, and the hoses run all the way out to the farm. And uh, it just we had no idea how much water was being used out there. Yeah. The, the property had one meter for everything, for inside use, our irrigation use, the, you know, this farm. <laughs> the first the first time I went out there, the residents came out and they brought this big palm leaf and filled it with poison berries and all these amazing fruits. Best fruits I ever had. And now after we got through this project, they never, they don't bring me anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what we did was we found through old building plans and trial and error on turning, off, uh, turning shutoffs off, we found which pipes lead to these spigots. So we added... Uh, timers as well as meters to those three areas and so we in Sacramento we have watering days so with the drought they install watering days you can only water two days a week and so we set the timers to coincide with the watering days you know we give them a, six, a three hour window in the morning three hour window at night on two days a week and uh, you can see the next slide if you <laughs> click forward you can see this year over year the green is 20 13 water usage, blue is 2014, and then orange 2015 and 2016. You can see in the summertime the water use just dropped in half there. And so we have the data. I, can't, I couldn't remember the number of gallons they're using. Something like 8,000 gallons in their morning watering allocation, and then same thing at night. And that's what they're using now. You know, I don't know what we don't know what they were using before, but. If they're like the rest of the California farmers, they're incredibly wasteful of their water. Yeah, and especially if they're not paying for it. They're not paying for the land, yeah, they're, not they're not paying for the water. And, uh, 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 okay. So, Mutual Housing with Spring Lake. This is our zero net energy community. It's a farm labor community in Woodland, just north of Davis. 62 units, built, opened in uh, March of 2015. 
you can see we got solar panels on the carports, on the roofs, everywhere. If you keep clicking through here, it's got all these green designations. It was it's won a bunch of awards. Uh, click again. So just brief on what we've been: energy efficiency appliances, uh, water heaters, heat pump. What's the technology side? Heat pump. So you can know, Therma, um, air source heat pump that does combine space heating and space cooling and domestic hot water. Mm -hmm. And no longer exists because Goodman, the manager of Dyson Thermal International Organization, shut it down because Goodman sucks. And mm. so we lost a great product. Okay. Uh, great insulation, the evolved shower heads, um, the canary, our so called canary energy monitors, so the resident, they're plugged into the wall and the resident can see instantaneously. If it's red, they're using a ton of electricity at the moment. If it's green, they're doing good. And then the other side, throughout the day. So at the end of the day, they see that it's always red. They've used a lot of electricity. If it's green, they've used a limited amount of electricity throughout the day. And they're resets and they can see the next day. Is that on the floor? How big is that? It's this big. I don't know. It's in their kitchen. We put it in the kitchen. I'll bring one. I can't be presenting on it. Although it is covered, like, I need to save you a minute. No. <laughs> okay. You've got to be frugal with these minutes. Okay. So, this is, so I'm going to dive into it. We've designed it. It's zero net energy design. This is like, and we did a poor job of presenting this to the residents as they moved in. Like, we told it, it's zero net. Your, your bills are going to be very low. You'll love it. Buy your five or $10 bills. Uh, Enjoy. So, so we ran into problems with with that pitch. And so here's the what is this one? Electric usage. So in the winter time, projected to use more electricity than the summer mm -hmm. months. And then, but that's an inverse to the the solar credit allocation that we're given. Very few less solar credits to offset their high bills in the winter, and then more solar credits in the summertime, and they have less. Supposedly less electricity usage. Uh, if you click again, okay, this is a chart showing daily kilowatt usage by bedroom size. So you can see the far left, some units are using a little bit of electricity, and then there's a couple of units using a heck of a lot of electricity. And that's across by the one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and four bedrooms. So there's a couple of units in the four bedrooms that are just using a ridiculous amount of electricity. And some are using in the zone that we predicted. Where is the property? Woodland, which is just near Sacramento. Okay. An hour north and west. So why? So the first year we did not meet the z &E target. We don't have da getting data on all 62 units plus the common area. That's another challenge. but. From what we saw, we did not meet it. Solar produced what it should have produced. Uh, the other, the other side of the equation was the usage, right? So that's where we ran into some some challenges. So one reason we believe is this: 2015 was the hottest year on record. So this is a chart of cooling degree days. You see, 2015 is off the chart. And so the model on how much people will be using their air conditioners is probably somewhere in that average, in the middle of those lines. And so in 2015. They're using a heck of a lot more air conditioning. Uh, another reason, PG&E bills. These are confused. These true up bills are confusing. <laughs> we, and the residents don't have to understand it, but it helps that we've educated them on how to read them. They, uh, but it, they were also delayed. PG&E had a huge backlog on on a, a new solar projects coming up. And so it took three, four months to start giving credits to the residents. So some residents didn't receive bills in the first few months. And then once they did, they were either high or low, or they didn't know what to make of them. Uh, okay, resident energy usage this is a big topic. This is one, see this TV? This was in somebody's bedroom. This was in the second bedroom, this other TV. You click again, this is their home entertainment system. It's another one of these TVs. They have like four speakers down here and two game players and who knows what else. So this unit will never meet our energy model, right? They will never be in that low thing. Oh, and a uh, bunch of freezers or extra an extra refrigerator that they've had for 20 years. Uh, okay, see these coolers? <laughs> 
this is out in someone's patio. There's two of these coolers. And if you click again, this is so cool. You open it up, and then one half keeps them cool. The other half will freeze them. So you'll have, you know, unlimited supply of refreshments throughout the year. <laughs> <laughs> Being stored outside at 100 and something degrees. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and, so, you know, another... another with the least efficient compressor on the market, yeah. I don't even want to figure out how incredibly wasteful these things are. They're off the charts. Yeah. They're little compressors, they're a freezer. freezer. Yeah. Yeah. So some other stories of residents living there. Someone had a baby in uh, June, and then they're home for three months during the summer. In Woodland, 105 degrees on average. You know, they're, they're home bedridden, home with the new baby. They're going to be running their air conditioning all day long. Another family's got three disabled kids that uh, one, I don't know, the, has a metal pain condition where they need to keep the, the temperature cool year-round. So they're running the AC year-round. Um, so we can't blame it all on the weather and pg and and the residents. So there were some building challenges. Here's the Dikenol Therma. Uh, if you click again, you can see this little thing here. That's the temperature gauge. It goes into the hot water heater, right? And we've set them all at 120. So we thought maybe, oh, so uh, one other story. All these same people, residents would come and say, hey, you told us it'd be five or $10 bills, right? And we're, we have high bills. What are you gonna do about it, you know? And like, well, look, you have three TVs, you have two big coolers, you, have, you shower six times a day. Um, so but then there were some stories where residents went out of town for a month. It was a farm labor, they go back to Mexico for a month. They said, we went out of town. We still had a $50, $60 bill. I said, I don't know. Maybe something's going on. So what else can we look at? So this is one. All the, all the hot water heaters were set for 120 degrees, but this, this temperature gauge was unplugged. So this one's, it looks plugged in, but there's a thin wire connected to a bigger wire. So it was actually disengaged. So the, it was reading like 115 degrees. And so it's trying to heat up to 120, and then when we engage it, stick it in, it's really 134, 138 degrees. So it's always running, trying to heat up. So this this was a big deal. So we you click on it again. This is data from that green button on PG&E's website that grabbed your data, 15 minutes interval data. So you can see a uh, huge baseline load that just dropped. This is for, for 15 minutes. And so we were able to grab a couple of units of data. And then the, the unit on the bottom, they, they didn't have, this wasn't the case in all of them. So this, they had high bills, and we plug it in, we go look at the exact day, nothing happened. So they just have a high baseline load. What type of water heaters are they? Well, they can like, they're tank hot water heaters, yeah. but I think it's a poorly designed place to stick a thermometer. Um, Okay, so that's about it. Just in some, we're, so we're doing resident education in groups, plus individually teaching them how to read their bills, looking at what they have in their units. We've been passing out these uh, power strips that you can place behind that home entertainment system, but then they have a thing on the wall that you can just press a button rather than reaching down behind there every night or when you leave the office. Um, I think that's it. Thank you.